Um, a lot of people now are starting to do gas. They're doing dryers that have gas. They're doing stoves that have gas equipment. So I'm going to break it down. Instead of doing a whole lecture on a gas stove or a gas dryer, I'm going to break it down by smaller, simpler components and make a lecture like 20 minutes, 30 minutes long uh, and go over specific components and how they work. Now I want to talk about gas regulators. Um, this is a gas regulator. Gas regulators go on any appliance that utilizes gas, like a, a dryer that has a gas burner for heat or a stove that uses gas. This is the first thing that the gas line from the wall connects to. Commercial appliances, they all have regulators. Um, these are very important for safety and control of the gas pressure inside the appliance. I'm going to explain how it works, what the components are, what do we do with this, uh, how do we test it, and so forth. Um, regulators, like if you're in a big commercial gas kitchen, for example, and they had a line of appliances that all running off the same gas supply in there, each one of these should have a gas regulator. Not only that, but behind the appliance, there should be, within six feet of the appliance, a shutoff. And that does not mean six feet through a one-foot wall, and the other side of that one-foot wall is the shutoff. The six feet has to be within reach of someone that's working on that appliance. For emergency purposes, you got to shut it off. So from that shutoff, which is on the main line, we go into the regulator. Now the first thing I want to show you guys is the regulator has an arrow on it that says in and out, showing you the direction that the gas will flow through the regulator. All right, so when you are installing them, if the two ends of the regulator are the same size, that you have an in and an out with an arrow showing you the direction of the regulator, it is important because if you don't have the gas flowing through the regulator the right direction, it's not going to do its job. So it has an in and an out on that regulator, okay? See that? Okay, so here is the regulator. Gas comes in, gas comes out. It's very important to control the gas pressure. And just like the word regulator, it regulates the pressure, which means... Whatever pressure is coming in here, it's controlling the compressor, the pressure coming out. Some of you guys have already used torches, especially the oxyacetylene torches like uh, uh, on a refrigerator. You want to change a compressor and you have those two valves you open for oxygen acetylene and it has those two small little tanks. But before you can use that torch, there's two dials on the front of it. And those dials on the front regulate the pressure coming out of the tank. When you use nitrogen, nitrogen has a regulator on it. When you buy a tank brand new of nitrogen or you have a tank refilled with nitrogen, that tank can have close to two to three thousand PSI. Now to give you an example of two or three thousand PSI, our car tires only put about 32 to 36 PSI of air pressure in a car tire. And if that tire blows out, that could be dangerous. That's only 32 PSI. So imagine we're dealing with nitrogen that can have two to 3,000 PSI. If that thing was opened without a regulator on it, that tank could go flying across the room. Okay, it is very dangerous. So working with some of these, you have to have gloves and, and safety glasses. So. How does a regulator regulate? I'm first going to explain like the overall principle of it, and then we're going to break it down. I have some diagrams of like the internal parts and show you what each part does and how it works. So let's assume our gas line is coming in. Okay, so our gas is flowing in the gas pipe. Now we have two different gases that we normally deal with on our appliances, and what are they? What are the two different types of gases? Natural and propane. Natural and propane. So I'm going to abbreviate it NAT and propane. So that equals natural. 
Propane sometimes has LP. It might be called an LP tank. What is LP? Liquid propane. Liquid petroleum. Liquid petroleum. There's another name for it. Manufactured gas. Okay, natural gas is usually gas that is naturally created. It's naturally recovered from the ground uh, by finding pockets of gas in the ground. They extract that gas from earth. Natural gas is created when we have decomposition of plants and, and animals and everything underground. They create pockets of natural gas. LP gas or propane gas is created when they manufacture actual gasoline for your car. What do we use to make gas for our car? Oil. Oil. We get like oil from OPEC or Saudi Arabia or one of those countries, and that oil is treated and we get gasoline. But some of the byproduct when we make gasoline is propane gas. So while we're making one, we're actually making another uh, thing and, and we capture that gas. Now those gases run off of different pressures. Just like our oxygen and settling tank and our torches, we have to adjust each one a specific pressure to get it to work properly. Does anybody know the natural or the propane pressures that we're supposed to, supposed to have on our appliances? Nobody? Some of you are already made it through gas dryers. Some of you are on gas appliances and nobody knows the pressures of natural propane? No? This is important because if you're working on an appliance and we don't have the proper gas pressure, it's not going to work. On, on some of the appliances dealing with commercial, they tell you on the unit, like, what's the... Um... Guess what? Most commercial appliances use the same natural gas pressure and liquid gas pressure as our residential appliances. Mm -hmm. Okay? They just use bigger lines instead of a, a little half inch line we use like a three quarter inch line or something why because we're feeding 20 appliances instead of one or two all right but we measure them with water natural gas is about three inches to five inches wcp and i'll explain to you what wcp is in a minute that is water column pressure all right lp gas is usually about 7 inches to 11 inches WCP. So it works off of a higher pressure. Right? So what is WCP? Well, we have a tool called a manometer. Manometer. And it uses a ruler. Water flows both sides. Yes. And that ruler, you notice I drew one line straight across, but I, I actually purposely drew those lines on one half or the other to make it a little bit easier to understand that this line is equal to zero. Okay? If I go down, each one of those is equal to one inch. So this would be one, two, three, four five for example mm -hmm. and then also going the other way it's the same one two three four five so what they do is they take a tube a clear tube that we can see it and we fill the tube up with water the tube runs down the ruler and back up the other side like so. And we fill that tube up with water. So as we're starting to put water in here, we have a manometer here for you guys to use. You have to be very careful because you could put like four drops and it can make a big difference in the manometer's reading. But when we fill it up with water, we want to fill it up, and I'll just use a different color for, for ease here. So we fill it up with water so it's at the zero line. On both sides. Yes, sir, on both sides, up to here to here. 
Now, on the manometer, it really doesn't matter which side we connect our hose to, or our pressure hose, but then we take a, another hose that's connected here to a fitting, and we attach this to the appliance. Usually this is attached over what they call the orifice, and we'll explain that another day when we talk about it. But that's where the burner is on the top of the stove. You take one of the burners off, and when the gas comes into it, you slide your hose over it. So when you turn the burner on, what's gonna happen? It's gonna put gas pressure, and it's gonna push down on the water on this side. As it pushes down on the water on this side, the water on this side is going to rise. The gas is going to create a difference in pressures. Okay, so what will happen is this will drop and let's say it drops to, uh, let's just say about, uh, let's say here. And this one goes up to about here. So this one goes down, this one goes up. How much pressure do we have? Yes, we have three inches. Right. So what type of gas are we working with? Natural. Natural. Natural gas. Mm -hmm. Because what we do is go one and a half down, one and a half up, we add them together. If you look, half, 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 there's three inches between the two, one going down and one going up. Or you just count one and add the two, double it. Times it by two, add the two together, it's going to give you the total water column pressure. So if I said I had eight inches WCP, where would these two lines be? Four. Four. Yeah. I'd be at four here. And four up top. And four here. This one would go down this far, and it would be like this. I'll put it in black so you can see the difference. And this side would go all the way up to here. So it would push the water down to here and push the water up to there, give me a total of eight inches. What type of gas am I dealing with? Propane. Propane, Propane or LP. Okay? Found me so far on... Now we also have a digital manometer, just like a digital meter, and you put your hose on it, and it will read digitally, which is a lot better than the water because you're always having to fill it with water, and you lay it down, the water pours out next time you need it. You don't have water in it, you gotta get water in it. What? You like a digital meter over a meter? Well, I said it's easier. Not didn't say I like it any better, right? right. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, one thing you have to be clear of, especially with the digital meter, is when you're taking the holes and sticking it over the orifice, as you're plying the holes, digital meter like our, our, our multimeters are very sensitive. So as you pushing the hose on there, it's actually increasing the pressure on the meter. And before you even turn it on, you're already gonna get a pressure reading. So you have to like crack it a little bit to get that pressure off and make sure when you put it on, you don't like slide it so far up that it's gonna create a big imbalance in your, in your pressure. Okay, so we use this manometer, not only just to check gas pressure, but if we have an appliance that the burners are burning, but they don't, they don't seem like they're burning enough. The first thing you want to know is, do I have the right pressure to my appliance? Because if I don't have the right pressure to my appliance, the problem is not my appliance, it's the pressure coming in. But that pressure comes through my regulator. Okay, we are not checking the gas line before the regulator. We got to check what's coming through the regulator. We don't have a way to connect to that. We don't have like a way to connect to the main gas line in the house. You'd have to buy some fittings and everything and get that to work. So when you get an appliance, this is an example of a regulator. Now take a minute. I took one image and edited the image. So the two that you see there look identical. And I'll zoom in on it so you can see a little bit better. But there is some differences between the drawings that I drew. So take a minute and see if you can identify some of the differences between the two regulators, how subtle they are. Take a minute and look at the two regulators and see if you can identify the differences. Mm -hmm. 
Anybody got any? Uh... One of them was bigger than the other. I'm sorry, what were your fingers? One of them was bigger than the other. Actually, the regulators are identical in size. Okay. So you, you... I took one of those images and I edited some things on the image so that the two of them, you know, have you ever seen like a picture of like five dogs and you say, which one doesn't have the spots or which one is missing an ear or whatever? There the, are some differences between those two regulators. At yes. the very top, the blue, where it goes, the blue to the yellow, the, yeah. the thing is one is a little bit bigger than the other, the uh, right. whistle. Okay, what are you trying to say? The blue and the yellow? Yeah, yeah. okay, go across, a little bit across now, right? Too much, right there, yeah, one is different. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, in the opening there. That's what I was referring to. Was like, I, I can't see what it says. So oh, this right is, on. what are you saying about this? That is different from the it's other picture. It's lower than the other one. It's lower, mm -hmm. isn't it? Mm -hmm. This one's higher up? Yeah, that's what I, that's what I was saying. Okay, so actually this whole blue black line where the blue is, if you look, the blue is smaller than, than the blue over there. Yeah, that's what I was referring to. The yellow is larger than the yellow over there, right? Is there any other differences that you can see on that? Not that I can tell. I don't have my glasses either, so does it help? <laughs> come closer. I can't see the words. You don't need to see the words. Just look, the look at the colors, look at the pictures. It's visual difference. Yes, sir. The red on the left is smaller than the red on the right. You're saying that this one yeah. is smaller? Yeah. Very good. It's smaller, and this is bigger. If you see right here, the red here is bigger, and you see here, the red is this red, red and this red are two different, but this one's bigger, right? Mm -hmm. Very good. So yeah. what happened is this is one whole piece that goes up and down on the regulator. And what goes up and down is the diaphragm. Now, diaphragm on a regulator is a round like rubberized disc with a piece of metal on it too. So there's a disc right here that's actually round like this and it's got a metal plate. So actually this piece, this line is actually like a round circle. Now if you look at this regulator here, can you see the round circle where that diaphragm would be inside of? Mm -hmm. You see how it's like a circle there, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So that diaphragm is inside of this. In the front end of that. Yeah, because the regulator diaphragm goes up and down. So it is thicker here, so that diaphragm can go up and down inside of there. All right? You see the round just there? So the diaphragm's in there like a plate, and it goes up and down on the gas pressure. Why does it go up and down, and what is it doing when it goes up and down? I'll come back to this image in a second. Let me uh, jump to... A blank page. So we have a gas line, right? Think of it instead of gas, think of it as a, a water hose. You want to put water in your yard and you want to water the grass, right? So you bought a couple of sprinklers. So for the heck of it, we're going to go and hook up a little sprinkler here to the hose and the sprinkler shooting out in the yard. Hey, works. Turn on the water, the sprinkler shooting out. But I got a big yard, let's say as big as this room here. So one sprinkler, if I put over there, is not going to reach over there. So I got to put a second sprinkler, right? Mm -hmm. So I'll put a second sprinkler here, and I'll connect it to the same line. Well, what normally happens when you cook, hook up more than one sprinkler to a hose? You lose pressure. You lose pressure. You lose pressure, so this one here doesn't shoot as far. But the other one's gonna work, right? Right. They're both gonna work about evenly if the sprinklers are identical sprinklers in size. If one's bigger than the other, they're not gonna shoot out evenly, obviously. Right. But the thought is, if I add more sprinklers on all of them, the pressure drops, right? Mm -hmm. So what happens if I have a valve here and I shut this sprinkler off, what's going to happen there? All the pressure. Increase pressure in the first one. The first one's going to go back like this, right? So think about a gas stove when you're working on a gas stove. If I turn on one burner, it's going to shoot a flame. Mm. If a gas burner worked like a water uh, sprinkler 
and I turn on the second one, they're both going to get small. That's not that bad if, it, if it's a little small. The problem is, is if you're cooking and you turn this one off, this one's going to get big again. And you do not want when you're cooking for the flame on your stove to go up and down in size, especially if you're cooking with grease. That you want that flame to stay the same size if I turn on all four burners on my stove or just turn on the one. You want them all to be the same size. So as safety, we're going to go ahead and use a regulator that controls the pressure. So what happens is the regulator is right here. The pressure here is a lot higher than the pressure we're using. If we said we're using natural gas and we're using three to five inches, let's just say three inches, on this side coming in, we're definitely way higher than three inches. We're gonna probably be about seven, eight inches roughly. I'm just hypothetic, I don't know the number coming in, but that's coming in from the city. So that if I turn on two, three, or four, I can maintain the gas pressure to all four of those burners that I have enough coming in to feed all of them. But this regulator has to be able to know if I turned on the four or not. And the valves on the stove when you turn them on or off aren't connected to the regulator. The regulator, that's it. Gas comes in, gas comes out. There's nothing connected to this regulator. So how does it know if a customer turned on more or turned some off? That's done by the diaphragm. Let's go back to that first picture for a second. So this red line is the gas coming into the regulator. And the gas pushes up on this piece right here, which forces the diaphragm up. That spring on top of it is pushing down. Okay? We have to have some sort of tension for the gas to push this diaphragm up and down. Okay. Now this piece here is down. If you notice this one, it went up. So the gas has to pass through this valve here to come out and go to the appliance. If I turn on a second burner, the pressure here is going to drop some, it's going to open up more and let gas out. If I turn it off, the pressure on this side is going to go up, the diaphragm will rise up and restrict the gas flow. So this thing goes up and down and moves this valve right here up or down. According to how many burners are on. Depending on how much pressure on the outlet to maintain that three or four inch coming out all the time. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what are the other pieces? One of the other pieces right here is a breather hole. That is this yellow cap right here. This breather goes on top. I can't get it off now. If I had a pair of pliers, I can grab it and unscrew it. But what happens is this is allowed to let the top of the diaphragm breathe because if it was airtight and the diaphragm tried to go up or down, that airtight would create pressure in there and the diaphragm can't move. It'd be in a solid air chamber. So it has to have a breather in there so when it goes up, it, it can push some air out so the diaphragm can move without any restriction. So the half the diaphragm has, has, is, breathes, the other half doesn't have access to air. The bottom half of the diaphragm is got the gas. The top half of the diaphragm, there's no gas here. It's so the same thing happens with letting air out when the pressure drops it goes down and lets air back in so it doesn't create a vacuum. So it allows that diaphragm to freely move on the top. Okay? So let's take a look at something here. These two on the left are identical. This one on the right is a little different. The diaphragm, uh, the regulator I have here is pretty much similar to the picture on the right, but let's stick with the one on the left. So what we have here are identical regulators, but what they did is they took off the cap, and the way they have the cap installed is whether it's installed for natural or LP gas. Now in commercial, they don't normally convert them from one gas to the other. They have an LP regulator, and they have a natural regulator. Okay, you just buy them already set, and you don't do anything to them. So how, how can you tell that it's LP or uh, natural? Uh, good question. How do you know if it's LP or natural? Well, which one is a higher pressure? 
LP. Okay, so let's go back to this picture here. If the LP is a higher pressure, and I have that gas coming in here, what's it going to do to my diaphragm? Uh, push it up. Gonna go so I'll push it up higher, right? And if it pushes it up too high, it's going to restrict the gas coming out the other side. So I have to be able to control how high up that diaphragm goes. That's done in this picture by the cap. If you look at the way this cap is, mm -hmm. the plunger or something is pushing up high here, but they flipped it over, over here, and now when I screw it in, it's pushing down on the diaphragm. So it's the same cap, but you can reuse it in both situations. Flip the cap over. Does anybody know which one is the natural? Which one's the LP? Uh, natural, LP, LP, natural. Which These two here. Don't look at this one over here. You, you have to say it as under You labeled it on the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't label it. I just took that picture off the internet. Okay, so then why is that one natural and LP then? Because if you guys can at least they, read. They got the top piece turned up. Okay, but. The plunger. But why? So it because the gas. Grease? The, because of the gas coming in. Well, this one here, because it's pressing down on the diaphragm, that higher gas pressure coming in, mm -hmm. it restricts right. that regulator from going up too high because it won't let the gas come out. So it I'm slows sure down the flow? It, it, no, it actually prevents it from restricting the it flow. It restricts the flow. It it's restricts that. the movement of the diaphragm. Okay? What would you do on some diaphragms? You'd adjust a screw to push it down more to let more out. If you had too much coming out, you'd back it off so it restricts the gas coming out. Well, this here basically just stops it from going too high up. I'm gonna give you a story now and then I'll go into this again. Went to someone's house. They bought a four burner cooktop, just four gas burners, and he put it in his backyard. He says, I like to cook fish, but my wife hates when the house smells like fish. So I put it on like a little patio out back so I could fry fish outside and not stink up the house. Like, oh, good. Brand new cooktop, didn't work. You went there and you turned the gas on the, on the stove, no gas came out. You couldn't even light it with a match. Not a drop of gas coming out. So I took the line off coming into the regulator, told the guy, turn on the tank. He had a tank on the side of the house. Turn on the tank, gas has come out, shh, and you can smell. Turn it off, turn it off. So I knew gas was coming into the regulator, in, nothing coming out the regulator. Somebody, I said, what? No, no. Go ahead. I was going to say something with the diaphragm. Well, gas come in the regulator, don't come out the regulator, so what am I going to do? Change the regulator, right? Yeah. Brand new stove, I order a regulator. Go back to the customer's house install the regulator, it didn't work. And I'm like, I know it's the regulator because I took the gas line coming off, I have gas, put it back, took the regulator off, I have gas coming out the regulator. No, I don't have nothing coming out my regulator. Nothing's coming out. I know I have gas coming in. Yes, sir. So the arrow was turned the right way? The arrow was turned the right way. So my, my thing is maybe the regulator came already pre-positioned for natural gas and he had propane on the side of the house. So then what we do on this one is we need to know the gas when we install a regulator. This one has a little plunger inside like the pitcher. Mm -hmm. This one just snaps out. This one here unscrews. <sighs> so I unscrew this and I'll show you, I'll mm -hmm. show you here. I uns unscrew this little one. By snaps out, you mean it's an It just pulls box. right out. It just pulls right out so instead, of, instead of screwed in. So this piece comes right out and this piece has uh, like like a washer on one end of it. You guys see that washer on the end? Mm -hmm. The other side don't. Can you see how it has like a washer there? Mm -hmm. See it, Jane? So when I put it like this, the spring goes all the way up to that washer. Mm -hmm. But if I unscrew it and flip it over so that the washer now is almost about three eighths of an inch, half inch. It won't let the wash. It won't let the spring go any higher. It's pushing down on the spring, 
So now it takes more pressure from the diaphragm to come up. So guess what? I took that regulator, made sure it was set for propane gas. The guy had propane gas. Still had no gas coming out. But wait a minute. Two regulators. Gas goes in. No gas comes out. The problem is the regulator on this tank. Mm. When you have gas from the city, there's a meter on the side of the house. That meter not only measures the flow of gas so it knows how much gas you use to charge you, like when you put gas in your car and it counts how many gallons you put in your car, but it also has a regulator inside of it for the whole house so it doesn't flood the whole house full of gas. But each appliance still has to have its own regulator. Well, this guy had a tank outside his house. Pause that for a second. So this tank here has a regulator on the tank. This is just like a barbecue grill tank, but it has a regulator on it. This regulator is not adjustable. Why? Because it's only going to be propane in it. It's only for propane or liquid petroleum, whatever you want to call it. It's not adjustable from natural to LP. You don't normally buy natural gas in a tank. But this guy had a bigger tank in his yard with one of these. Now, I didn't have a tester that went to his line but I said, sir, the problem you have is the pressure coming in is too high. And even though we try to restrict how high up this diaphragm rises, if the pressure coming in here is too great, it'll lift up on that diaphragm so high, it'll lock that out and no gas will come out because it's not safe. So that diaphragm will close that valve and lock it up. All right, so for natural gas, nothing presses down. For LP, it presses down on the spring. So you, you can tell. Now, on these caps here that we looked at, actually, on the inside of that cap, it sometimes says NAT. Mm -hmm. And on the other side right here, you might see letters LP. If you read the word LP, it's configured for LP gas. If you read the word NAT, it's set up for natural gas. Okay? So, this one here is basically the same as this one here. This, this piece that I took out, flipped over. This is natural, the way he put it in. If I flip it over, it's set for LP. Instead of screwing it in, it just snaps in and out. Now, since it has this rubber diaphragm inside of it, if you take the gas lines off, no gas should leak out the top. But it's always recommended before you do anything with any of the gas components in the machine, shut the gas off to the appliance before you make any calibrations or adjustments to it. Then do your calibrations or adjustments, turn the gas back on, check it for leaks, and then you can use it, okay? So, diaphragms go up and down and they control how fast the gas out. Any questions about these regulators? There's not a lot to them. Does it do anything particular if it's getting low gas flow? Well, it, it drops the diaphragm which opens up, but if you're less than three inches coming in, it will not increase the pressure coming out. Okay. And I, so it adjusts I'm, down but can't increase pressure by creating resistance. It cannot okay. increase the pressure. All it does is try to open up to get sufficient pressure there. The spring on top is calibrated for that. Okay. Okay, but it cannot, it, it doesn't have any moving parts but that diaphragm up and down and that valve and it has, it's not like a pump and has a way to increase the pressure. All right, so again, I said it's similar to a torch. When you light an oxy selling torch, you're adjusting manually the regulators. The only way we can adjust these regulators is by cap. Now, some of these high-end appliances, they're only set for natural or only set for LP and cannot be converted. Our decor oven inside of there does not have a conversion. I had a different brand from another customer call me out 
because their flames were too small. And I said, oh, I do just convert it. You know, you have it for LP, but it's set for natural. Let me convert it so, you know, and vice versa. She had it set for LP and she had natural gas. So I said, well, I'll just convert it so you get more gas to your burners. What if it was the other way around? Would you have a massive flame or no flame at all? If you have it set for LP, no, if you have it set for, for natural, natural gas, but you're trying and you to connect to LP, your flame will be very large. Noticeably large or just Noticeably big? large and very yellow on the ends. Okay, just so imagine lovely. a torch. Okay. If you don't have enough oxygen on the oxy-acetylene torch, what's the flame look like? Green. Yellow. It's yellow. Green. Big, Green. strong yellow flame. Not only that, but what do I always complain about when you light Soot. a torch? Soot. And the same thing's going to happen in a stove or a dryer. If there's not enough oxygen to the flame, you're going to get a lot of black soot coming out into the appliance. So the customer complained, my pots are all black. And the problem is, is there's not enough oxygen, there's too much gas. What well, about a dryer like that back vent? I've seen customer service that is burning their clothes. Because that's that's right. usually because of ventilation, where the flame and the heat are coming, but instead of enough airflow over it, it's burning up the metal panel, whether it's electric or gas heater. Okay? So I'm going to give you one last anecdote or story because man you know I run into things all the time when I was working on appliances and I and I wish I had the kind of cell phones we have nowadays where you could take pictures of stuff and, and save them but I'm going to show you something I have to search the image so give me a second here Show you just a a regular gas stove burner. They don't give me. They give me all the high end ones here. Now see how blue these flames are. That is the kind of flame you want to see on a gas stove. Only about an inch to an inch and a quarter, with no yellow, nice blue flame. Okay. Okay. Here, this is what I wanted to see. This is like a standard, one of the more inexpensive stoves. Let me just, it's not gonna give me the image, right? Did I say open image in a new tab? I tell you what, I'll just zoom in on that. And it didn't help, okay. Yeah, you, can't, you can't do it through Google. All right, so look at these burners, simple burners. And, I, and again, we're gonna talk about burners another day, but I wanna show you a story that some of them have a long gas tube that runs to the valve. This one, the, ga the gas came right up the, the bottom here. But I had four of them to replace, two short ones for the front and two long ones for the back. And I thought, wow, I got an easy job. Man, you know how hard it is to lift up the top, grab these four, pull them out, snap the new ones in, set the top down, and I'm done. When I got there, the whole top of this burner here was melted like a candle. You know how the top of a candle looks like it's melted on the top now? The burner, the aluminum, was melted like a candle. But if you look at the flame here on that other image, I can't find, okay, the flame on this image, the flame doesn't normally touch the burner. The flame actually is off of the tip of the burner, and the pressure keeps it from actually hitting the burner. So it shouldn't get that hot. So I didn't think anything of the melted ones. I thought they just turned it on and left it on for four hours and it got so hot it melted. So I had to turn all four of them on, but instead of the flame going up like this, the flame went down like this. And I'm like, man, there's some kind of like devil stuff here. Instead of the flame going up, the flame's going down. If you hold a lighter, anybody got a lighter? Nobody got a lighter? If you hold a lighter, and go like this, the flame's gonna go up in the air. If you take the lighter and turn it, it still goes up in the air. If you turn the lighter like this, you're gonna burn your hand because the flame up. goes up. All right? So I turn on this gas stove and the flame is going down. I never saw that before. I was like, I don't know what the hell is causing this. I've never seen this before in my life. 
So I said, let me look behind the stove. So I pulled the stove out to look behind it. I don't know, I didn't know what to do, but I just started looking. I didn't see nothing. Turn the burner on, the burner's like this, instead of like this. Wait. What? But all I did was take the stove and pulled the stove away from the wall. So then I says, well, when it's against the wall, flame's going down. When it's away from the wall, flame's going up. Six inches? What? Six inches? Six inches. Yeah. No, it wasn't that. It was like from here down behind the stove, not, there was no drywall. It was just an open where oh, I could see the studs. It was pulling the drywall. And not only that, the customer was off of Southwest 8th Street by the Marlin Stadium. And she was in like a three story building, like a real one of the older buildings. And there was, there was an air draft running through the wall. And that air draft was pulling air, causing a flame to go down. So I told the customer, listen, you can't put the stove there until you fix the wall or pull the stove away from the wall when you use it. Otherwise, it's going to melt again. That's crazy. I've never seen that before. I've never seen it again. But again, you're going to run into things like that you've never seen before. Every year, there's a new design, new model machine coming out. So take a minute, walk around, look at the different things that you see and try to figure things out. It's not easy that always or not always that easy not, e not easy or whatever so regulators maintain gas pressure to the burner so that the burners always have the same size flame if I turn all four of them on they're gonna be that size if I turn these three off at the same time that burner will not go up the diaphragm will regulate and make sure that that burner stays that size the whole time the same thing with the oven. The oven flame is only about that long from the burner. You have a long metal splash or, or, or heat shield on it so that the heat goes out and circulates around the oven. But the flame shouldn't be that long. Okay? These flames are designed for the maximum heat capacity of that appliance, and that's it. Yes, sir? When you check, when you're in a customer house and you check for the, the regulator, right, you have to have the gas off so you can take that thing that you were selling. No, you could, you could, you could take this it. cap off, yeah. but I'm telling you, I recommend that whenever you do work on a gas yeah. supply, shut, shut the gas it. off. Yeah. You could take this off because gas should not leak, yeah. but I don't recommend that you do this with the gas on. Does the, does the, this is another question, but does the size of the flame correlate to the temperature of the flame? Well, you'll have a little bit larger flame on an LP versus natural because we are dealing with a higher pressure gas, but it isn't that much larger or that much smaller. Okay, so then does the regulator allow for independent temperatures on, it, on the each um each of the no, the regulator maintains that each valve that you turn has the same amount of gas pressure at the valve. Okay, I'm going to get to explain your answer, but I have to work my way up. So when you turn the valve, it's like a water valve. I go to that sink and I can move it a little bit, water comes out slowly. I move it a lot, water comes out fast, but the maximum it will flow is based on that valve. On a gas stove, you have that option to make it larger or smaller but when you go to a higher or, or larger opening on the end of the burner here right here as it comes in there's something called an orifice sounds like a big thing but the word orifice is just a hole or an opening when we go from natural to LP we have different size holes or openings or we have adjustable orifices which can make the opening larger or smaller and that orifice is going to regulate that flame size. <coughs> so on a stove, we can adjust an orifice or we take an orifice off and put another one in its place. Now we're going to do that maybe tomorrow or next week and we're going to do the manometer gas pressure test but we're waiting for that one gas stove that we have to be fixed. Once that's done and we, we confirm that there's no leaks and it's working properly, we're gonna have another lecture on conversion of gas from natural to LP, what other different things we have to do to convert it, and we'll look at the difference in flames. If I put an LP tank 
on a stove that's set for natural, what does the flame look like? If I convert it to LP, what does the flame look like? Okay? Yes, sir. Um, in the time that I've been doing this, I've only ever seen the adjustable orifices on the phenomenally expensive units. Is that always the case? Actually, it's usually the opposite. On the more expensive units, the orifices are mounted right underneath the burner you just, and you they change. just take it out and replace it. On the ones like, like this, they're usually adjustable orifices. Even the oven too. The oven that we have in there has an adjustable orifice. Okay, because I had a filmer door that I looked at and when I went through the guide, it very explicitly explained, you put down a socket, turn it to the left if you want more, right, and let you adjust and also ask for a manometer so that the customer could get the flame to the height they wanted. Okay, well, but, um, like the decor one we have here came set up for one gas and I said, well, we don't have that gas here, you know, can I have the instructions for conversion on this one because I don't see it. And basically the answer was, you buy that stove for natural or you buy that stove for LP. So when you go to the store to purchase it, the salesman's supposed to say, what type of gas do you have in your home? And they sell you that appliance. Sorry. And it's already configured. And the reason I get that, and that you might, the answer was, when we manually convert from one gas to another, the burner is exactly the same size on the two. Imagine taking a car and putting a supercharger on it, but not making many other changes to the valves, the exhaust, mm -hmm. and the intake, that we don't make adjustments to the airflow too much. So we may get an increase in power, but we're not gonna get the actual increase in power. So when we convert those stoves, the actual burner is rated for a certain amount of BTUs or a certain amount of heat that's given off. And when you convert it from one gas to another, the conversion doesn't give you, if it's a 5,000 BTU burner and you convert it to a different gas, it doesn't give you 5,000 BTUs anymore. So each burner is made for that pressure of the gas. Okay. Okay? You got a question? No? Anybody else have any questions? Okay, so we'll go over the rest of the stove another day once we get the stove corrected and fixed. Do you have any other questions? Have a great day.